anovulation pretty easy to detect if just based on periods of your if you're a frequent anovulator means you don't have an ovulation every month and you only have like three or six periods a year that's pretty easy to detect but there's a certain amount of women that will have an anovulatory cycle so they have 12 uh, months of cycles every month in a year but occasionally an ovulation won't happen Hi everybody, I want to talk to you about the new Apple 8 series watch, which was just released this week in the Bay Area, creating quite the normal buzz that we normally see from Apple every September. This uh, particular watch had some really interesting features when it comes to uh, fertility, fertility tracking, and ovulation tracking. And uh, basically what they've done with this watch is they've placed a couple sensors on it for men and women to be able to track their temperatures but for women that's particularly useful because temperature and temperature fluctuations throughout a normal menstrual cycle month would have some variation and those can actually be interpreted and an easy way to look at this is that if you divide the menstrual cycle into two parts pre and post ovulation with uh, ovulation or release of the egg being in the middle then the temperature would be slightly lower at the first half of the menstrual cycle and slightly higher in the second half of the menstrual cycle. And just to kind of wrap that around normal temperature, if your normal temperature is around 37 degrees Celsius, in the pre-ovulation phase, you would have a temperature maybe half degree lower than that. In the post-ovulation phase, your temperature would rise back closer to that 37, so up by about 0.5 degree. Apple says it's able to detect the temperature differences um, down to 0.1 degree Celsius. So in theory, uh, this would work. And the reason why this is novel is because, well, two, two big things. One, it makes it easy. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that in a second. But... The other one would be that it is a novel approach to checking temperature on the periphery. So um, as you can imagine, checking our core temp body temperature would be best accomplished by measuring temperature internally, if you could. But it's invasive to measure, uh, you know, have a thermometer inside your body. We've then tried to do it peripherally, but it's not quite as good. So uh, and that's due to the fact that the environment can, can alter it and also that um, your skin will go through normal temperature changes as it vasodilates and things like that. So, so basically what Apple did is they have two sensors on this watch. So there's one on the outside uh, near the glass uh, face and then there's one close to the skin. And by basically using that differential, they're able to more accurately achieve your true or what we would call a core uh, body temperature. So that's, that's the technology piece behind it. But the other really big piece behind it is just that acquiring this data in general is quite laborious. So you know, normally before all these wearable devices, a woman would have to get a chart out and log every day a temperature to kind of get this information. And that's quite a, a big undertaking. And normally that would probably fizzle out after a month or two because it's, it's getting up every morning before you start your activities, taking your temperature, writing that down. So what this device is allowing us to do is basically, if you're willing to wear the device, especially at night when this would be uh, most accurately reflected in the in the subtle changes of the temperature, then we can get that uh, shift over many months. And a lot of things when it, when it comes to medicine or even more uh, specific in fertility medicine or reproductive medicine is acquiring data. And so a lot of times just a snapshot of a lab test or something like that, a one ultrasound doesn't tell us the whole picture. And so with this device and its ability to detect these subtle changes, what might take place is acquiring more data in general so we can learn for the general public kind of more of these nuances that are normal. Even more important to an individual would be acquiring many months of data over time in an easy way. And so just simply wearing your watch at night, not having to deal with taking the temperatures will give you many months of data. And why that's important is because there could be some subtleties. You know, um, if you would just go by based on a normal menstrual cycle being 28 days, many of us in the clinic would just typically say, well, that over time, if you had one that was abnormal or one that you didn't ovulate, even though you maintain a 28 day menstrual cycle, that's not really clinically significant. I think a pretty strong case can be made for that, that over time, your pregnancy rates will probably be the same. So it's a little bit too much getting down in the weeds and kind of dissecting this a little bit too much and it can you know, kind of drive you crazy a little bit, taking these daily temperatures over a long, uh, long period of time. 
but add, you know, add stress, et cetera. But I think that if we make this easy, uh, what we could do is we could draw out sometimes the occasional anovulation event. And that's really important because anovulation, pretty easy to detect if just based on periods, if you're, if you're a frequent anovulator, it means you don't have an ovulation every month and you only have like three or six periods a year. That's pretty easy to detect. But there's a certain amount of women um, that will have an anovulatory cycle. So they have 12 uh, months of cycles every month in a year, but occasionally an ovulation won't happen. And that could be a very, very subtle subtle uh, way of detecting some kind of um, abnormality that could lead to uh, perhaps some endocrine disturbances. So either a subtle high testosterone or maybe a subtly low uh, progesterone or estrogen in the luteal phase when that's really important to support pregnancy. So this would be kind of like a smoking gun and you would only detect this if you could have exposure to many, many, many data points which might be achievable through something like this. And if you're already wearing this device, which millions and tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of women are already doing, and you're willing to wear that uh, to bed every night and to, to have these temperatures monitored, then you'd be able to maybe pick that up. And that becomes really important as we're aging. Again, subtleties may become less important when we're in our 20s, if we're trying to get pregnant then, but if you're in your mid 30s and upwards, that's gonna be really important because the earlier that we can detect abnormalities, the more that we can do to kind of uh, mitigate any problems from those. So I'm pretty excited about the new Apple Watch. Um, I think we're gonna talk more about, you know, kind of if it's worth it um, in terms of the, you know, the cost. I don't think it's worth it just to detect an ovulation if, you're, if you have normal menstrual cycles and you're young, but um, if you already have the watch and, and um, you like wearing it and you're getting older, you're thinking about maybe starting a, a family a little bit later, uh, after 35 or so, uh, this may be something that's easy to do and doesn't cause you a lot of stress and uh, may give you some useful information. Thank <laughs> you.